Good afternoon, everyone. Top left, west, record heat, center of the country, record cold, media silent. Also silent on the hundreds of cold records shattered just a week ago. Talk about Greenland ice, massive gains in the melt season. Also can't talk about that, nor the record cold start to summer in Saskatchewan, sidestepped by British Columbia heat, rare summer frost in the UK, June cold, below zero, Scottish Highlands, very unusual, record cold pounding the Southern Hemisphere, Australia and New Zealand, as far north as the North Island, incredibly rare, and then another gigantic dust storm sweeping through North and South America, first and second week of July. New studies show that by the time people reach their middle ages, the body often produces less than half of the collagen it did in their youth. Collagen is the main building block in our skin, making up 70 to 80 percent of it. This is why we get sagging skin and wrinkles as we age. If you want to look younger, you must supplement collagen, which will improve your skin's elasticity, make it smoother, more plump, and more youthful looking. That's why Ageless Multi-Collagen provides five key types of collagen you need from four different sources, essential to optimally support an array of full-body benefits. No odor, no taste, no clumping, unlike other collagen supplements. And this is why I recommend Health with Adapt 2030. Ageless Multi-Collagen, and look at that, I need another bag already. Quick way for youthful appearance. Use the link in the description box below for 51% off my favorite Ageless Multicalogen. And now on with the video. And I don't care whatever corporate media and newscast you go to, it's all about the record heat, record heat, record heat, Canadian national record highest temperature, half a degree warmer, and it gets 16,000 pages of coverage. But at the same time, the record cold in the central grow zone of the United States, equally 20 to 30 degrees Fahrenheit below the normal temperatures. Why is that not being talked about? Only the heat in the Northwest, same 20 to 30 degree temperatures above the norm. Historic heat, yet there was historic cold as well, less than seven days ago. Crickets in the media, too inconvenient, I know. Now look at some of these forecasts here, and I say, no, that's an over-exaggeration. 116 degrees, 114 degrees, 120 degrees in Oregon and Washington. I know models are running hot. You know, climate reanalyzer, the hottest on the web. Heat warnings out, pivotal weather showing current hazard map, Canada and Pacific Northwest U.S. I would just take us back seven days how much news media coverage was on the all-time record cold from Canada down into Texas Panhandle? Not much. Swept under the rug. Can't have hundreds and hundreds of cold records, all-time cold records, being shattered and actually give some balanced coverage to the heat. So you'll have to go off and look for your own independent research and find just single stories that are out there versus the information in the rest of this video here. Record cold start summer for Saskatchewan. Seems that Canada has an agenda for reporting as well. Record cold can't. Record heat can. These records were broken back to 1951, 1917. Same as we saw the 1937 Dust Bowl era temperature broken, which means it's a cycle. Remember that whole Climate Gate email fiasco was about trying to cool that Dust Bowl era to make it look as if it was a linear temperature trend when 1937 was that record that we looked at in the very beginning of the video. Now, moving on to Greenland ice, you thought for sure that this would be the number one front page story, how much ice is regrowing on Greenland. So let me wind that out for you. This is the mass gain or the mass loss through the year. We're heading deeply into the melt season right now, and they would need to put a new band to 14 gigatons of loss, and that giant spike that pegged on the chart. It was about 13.7 gigatons, so they would have had gone up to 14. But that would have been super inconvenient. That that much ice had gained where they needed to put two other bands inside this chart here. And then we see this 
second anomalous ice gain spike going into the melt season. If the whole point of the global tax scheme is to put the ice back on Greenland, you think that this would have made 16,000 publication front pages like the heat is, but it's happening at the same exact time. These are the same days that the heat's going on. Speaking of mass balance, I guess there's no balance in reporting. Let's jump over to the rare summer frost in the UK. And also historically cold this year across the UK, 10 to 12 degrees Celsius below the seasonal norm. Now that's Celsius degrees, not Fahrenheit. Looking at about uh, 15.3 degrees Fahrenheit below the normal season temperatures. Squawking about heat. Pacific Northwest for a few days, but missing an entire trend for a full season across the greater UK. And also look at this, Scottish Highlands. Picked this off extreme temperatures around the world. Great Twitter page to follow if you're looking for this type of information. So I started to dig into some of the temperatures there. A little bit difficult to see. They're all near freezing or below freezing. So I thought, let me pull out that page that has all the below freezing where water turns to ice temperatures. 3.3 degrees Celsius below the freezing point, which is around 25 Fahrenheit into the summer in the Scottish Highlands. So rare that it's making publication regionally, but not internationally. Also, if you look at May as a general temperature trend, one of the coldest May is going back to 1659, which was, history lesson, the Grand Solar Minimum, the Maunder Minimum. And also you see some repeating cycles here. 1957 was the last time it was cold, 26 Fahrenheit. And if you look at January, April, and May, below normal temperatures, that's a trend. It's not a single event. But a staggering 1.5C below the statistical average on the 30-year average, not reported widely. Wonder why not? So jumping to the southern hemisphere... Antarctic low after Antarctic low, record cold, smashing snow, records obliterated across Australia this early in the season as well, with temperatures, rainfall, and the mouse plague, of course. But if we jump over to New Zealand, oh my, record cold emergency alerts due to coldest ever temperatures recorded at this time of the year, North Island, which is mind-boggling in itself, but this Antarctic blast when they say sub-zero, they're talking about zero degrees Celsius or freezing temperatures, which will put some of these we're reading around 14 degrees Fahrenheit in the North Island in New Zealand. Unprecedented, this cold. But again, South Africa getting hit with an unreal cold event at the moment. Record cold across South America. Here you see in New Zealand, Australia. So it seems that the Southern Hemisphere is leading the Northern Hemisphere, this grand solar minimum, by one season. So what happens there will happen in our winter in the Northern Hemisphere. Expect cold, record cold snows, early start, shrunken grow seasons, increasing food prices, and global yields for crops down. I know that was a lot to take in in that sentence. Or run-on sentences. Let's jump over to some dust storms here. Saharan dust storm, what you're looking at the far east of this just coming off Africa, that black and purple is full block out of sunlight. And I'm like, wow, that's incredible. But the plume is set to roll over both North and South America, coming in the 7th of July and moving through that whole week through the 14th, 15th, and 16th. Now, currently, the forecast this is the GOES 5, July 7th. And you see that that black streak has dissipated. So I'm looking for some information about Mauritania and Morocco currently to see what kind of dust storm conditions are there. Because the ongoing event where that black streak means sunlight was blocked out. So I'm trying to backtrack that to the you know, origination countries off of West Africa. If you have any information, please leave it in the description box below. Now, keep in mind, during this time, food is going to get really expensive. These global yields are going to decrease this year. And all the emergencies we've had and store closures and, and supply chain disruptions, you may want to think about storable foods. Mylar Pack foods, storable up to 25 years, the two-week emergency or the four-week emergency food supply. My Patriot Supply and Adapt 2030 working together here to bring you some peace of mind, knowing you have storable foods. My Patriot Supply also has a one-month, six-month, and one-year food supply pack as well. Check out what they have for preparedness. 
and what you might need for your families to keep your families safe. That link's in the description box below along with all the images, stories, graphs of tonight's video so you can run these down and do your own research. Don't believe what I say. Do your own research. That's why I leave the links below in every single video. And if you buy something from My Patriot Supply, it's a great way to support this channel so I can bring in more research just like this. I thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.